Hey friends, it's Dwight. Welcome back to my studio. We're going to do another pour today. I will be doing another colander pour, um, and I'm going to be using colors of red. Now, I've done some red before, and um, I had some good results, so I'm not really sure how this is going to work today using a colander. But I'm going to be using red and orange, and then some rose gold, so sort of in the red family. I will be using some white, but I'm going to add some Payne's Gray to it to give it a sort of a a grayish blue hue that will hopefully show up between um, some of these layers. Now, a couple things I want to say, um, especially about Artist Loft. I mentioned in a video uh, a couple of weeks ago that um, a subscriber of mine, his name is Roger, um, has suggested that some of the newer um, production batches of Artist Loft Soft Body Black weren't working as well with the Dump and Swirl. And the ones that I showed you were made basically back in June and July of last year. And I still have about five or six of those bottles. So I think I'm okay for now. But what I've um, discovered, especially with a bottle that I had that was newer, um, I'm kind of going with the idea you need to thin it more than you usually would thin it to do a dump and swirl. So when I get to that point, I'm gonna experiment again some more and we'll see how that works. So yeah, so I'm going to set up my paints and I will show you the consistencies and I'll tell you right now, like I always say, that my paints are mixed all the same. I use one part paint, two to three parts Floetrol, a drizzle of Liquitex pouring medium, you know, just a little drizzle or a little squirt, um, and water. And I just use water to thin, okay? And you need to get it thin so that when you're drizzling it off your stir stick, it doesn't sink and it doesn't mound. So you have to find that happy medium. And sometimes, you know, you have to tweak it and add a little bit more water. And if it's too runny, just add a little bit more Floetrol or a little bit more paint. And that should work out okay. Okay, guys, sit back. Hold on. We'll get started here in just a moment. And, um, yeah, I'm going to set everything up and start mixing paints. And then I'll show you uh, my consistencies and actually the colors so you have an idea of what I'm going to be working with today. Okay, we'll catch you in a second. Okay, friends, here we are back. Paints are all mixed. Um, yeah, so I am going to be pouring this sort of grayish blue in between all the layers. I, I was figuring as I was mixing, I want this to be light, so I don't mind if there's even some pink because of the red. So I'm gonna do, you know, just pour and then another color and then white and another color and white and another color um, and see what kind of results we get. Again, using my colander. Um, so yeah, this is my Artist Loft Soft Body Black. It's all mixed, ready to go. And then here's my orange. And that is DecoArt's Warm Sunset. And then I have Tuscan Red, which is another favorite color of mine. Works really well, the dump and swirls, they seem to react nicely. And then this is the Rose Gold, but this is a folk art paint. And then this is Titanium White, and it's also folk art, but I use a little bit of um, Payne's Gray, I think it was Liquitex Basics or some brand like that. So just a little bit, a little bit off-white. And yeah, we're gonna do dump and swirl um, with the colander, and I've got my canvas all level. And what I'm gonna do is paint the edges and corners because I use thin paints, and I wanna make sure that the white canvas doesn't show through. So just a little bit. I, I sometimes do a little more than I need to. So let me show you the consistency real quick before we move on and, and get ready to paint. So if you can see, It just kind of goes in. I hope that makes some sense for you. Um, I always check my consistencies before I actually pour just to make sure that since they've been sitting um, as I was mixing my other paints, they don't settle or thicken up. And we'll get started here in just a minute, guys. Okay, guys, here we are getting ready to do our pour. Say hi to everybody first. So yeah, this is a 24 by 36 canvas. And as usual, I like to start with the lightest color on the bottom. Um, and as I mentioned a few moments ago, I'm just gonna start layering um, the white, the, the grayish blue white between the layers basically to sort of have the mix in. And there's that sunset orange, which is really pretty. It's nice, almost like a pumpkin orange up close. And as you can see, when I'm starting to pour it in, it's starting to mix. It sinks a little bit, then it comes up to the surface. That's what I want, because I know that it's, been, it's going to be mixing with the colors. I like sort of the impressionistic look. 
Um, yeah, so I just keep adding the white, the orange. And I love that rose gold. I think it works really well with orange and with red. Okay, I'm finishing up my cups here, getting all the last of the paints out and um, stirring up my black paint real quick to make sure that its consistency is just right. And the fun part is lifting up the colander. Get as much paint out as I can. There we go. Looks like a mess, but let's watch and see what happens. So I usually pour my paint slightly off center, as you notice, because I tilt down to the lower left corner first. That's sort of just a, a habit that I have. Um, you can tilt any direction you, you'd like. Um, I always say to myself, okay, Dwight, let's try a different direction, but when it comes to tilting, I kind of forget. So maybe next time I'll try that. As you can see, the color really is starting to pop through. I was really excited at this point because I knew even I'm sitting here wiping my hands off, as you can see, and it's just sort of exploding with color. So I want to make sure the edges were all um, covered. Just move around just a little bit more. I think I found my torch over there. I found a new torch that works really well, actually. Um, better than the previous torches that I've used. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is put this on time-lapse in just a second here, and we'll do the walkthrough, and I'll show you the final wet results. Hey friends, I'm back. That was about 30 to 40 minutes and it exploded. And what's even funnier, about 15 minutes ago or so, I poked my head in and the negative space wasn't even filled yet. So uh, it, it really, really is doing a lot. There are some really cool features about this pour I wanted to show you. So I'm trying not to stuff in any paint. You know, when you get close, you can see the matrix and you can see of uh, the complexity of the design. And here's my favorite part. Look at those cells right there. I, I'm kind of speechless with the, the way the color showed up. It almost looks like it's a cartoon, um, like it's drawn. Let me show you down this end here. The same thing, um, you have all this interest these beautiful cells, and then this little pocket right here. Look at that. Let's see if I can get it to focus, yeah. And the negative space isn't bad, you know. I'm glad that it's not um, filled in completely. I'm glad it's not much bigger, because just the interest in all of these cells makes Dwight a happy camper. Yeah. So I've done red before, never had results like this. Um, I'm very pleased. I think it's turned out great. Um, yeah, I'm very happy. So guys, uh, yeah, I, I mixed my paints thin. I showed you at the beginning, you know, the consistency and the black paint was basically the same consistency. So it's still possible. And I really do think the reds in the Deco Art Americana brand paints really sell a lot. It was interesting when I was mixing my Floetrol, and I need to show you this at some point. Um, I poured a Floetrol in, and then you could see everything sell up. And that always tells me we're gonna have a reaction. This is gonna be fabulous. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being patient, and we'll see you real soon.